Hey YouTube, today I'm going to show you how to create a sliding door inside of Roblox Studio. So first, I'm going to create a door. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. And of course you can customize this however however you would like. But basically, uh, I'm also going to have some walls here. And we're going to have like a sensor in front of the door. It's basically going to detect whenever a player is in front of the door and then if there is a player in front of the door then the door will automatically slide open. So now let's make these walls like black. Then let's select all of this and let's make it maybe diamond plate. So that looks pretty good I'd say. Um, I'm going to name this part to door so that I can edit the part inside of the script. Uh, and then I'm going to create a duplicate of this and then make sure that it's right in front of the door and that it is about this large and then make another one on the other side grab both of these parts, set the transparency to 1 and can collide to off uh, and then select everything, make sure it's all anchored so that it doesn't fall apart and then grab this part and call it button 2 and then this one will be button 1 and then uh, another thing grab your door and if you'll see right here if we move it into the wall it'll do this weird thing called Z fighting we don't want that though so to fix it what you can do is just make it thinner than the actual wall and now if we do the same thing there we go, it doesn't do that word thing anymore. But yeah, anyways, now that we have our little contraption here, we can go ahead and group all of this into a one model. I'm just going to call it sliding door. Uh, and then I'm going to create a script inside of the model. And I'm going to create a few variables. So I'm going to do local doors equal to script.parent.door, then button one. and then button 2 then I need the tween service which is what we're going to use to uh, move the door and we also want tween information which is like going to be the information that we use to uh, give to the tween so that it knows what to do with the part so what you need to do is type in tween info dot new and then inside of these parentheses, you'll see over here, there's a bunch of different things. Um, we're only going to be using the first couple. So first we need the time. That's the time that it takes to complete the tween. Or let's say we want it to be one second. And then the easing style. Let's do enum.easingstyle. I'll do bounce because it looks nice. But you can do linear. Uh, enum.easingdirection.out because we want it to go outwards and that's actually it for the twin info next uh, the last variable we actually need is the debounce uh, set it equal to false debounce is pretty much just what we're going to use to set a cooldown on the part uh, so that the door doesn't just continuously open over and over again but yeah um, now we want to detect whenever a player is stepping on the two buttons so we're going to do button1.touched, connect a function to that, and then we're going to get hit, which is referring to whoever is touching the button. So now inside of here, we want to check if it's on cooldown. So if not debounce, which means if debounce is false, and if wait, and hit dot parent find for child humanoid, then we want to set set it on cooldown or yeah on cooldown and then we want to create a twin so local twin is equal to twin service colon create and then we're going to give it three different arguments so the first one is the instance that's referring to what the part that we're actually trying to edit so in this case that's the door and then the tween info which we just created and last but not least the property table 
So this is just a table uh, which you can create using the two squiggly brackets. And inside of this table, we just want to put whatever property we're trying to change. So in this scenario, we're trying to move the door to the left. Uh, and so we want to change the C-frame. So to type in C-frame, C-frame is just the like orientation and position of a part inside of the world. Um, so type in C-frame equals, we're trying to change the door C-frame. So do door dot C-frame and multiply that by a new C-frame in order to actually move it. And we'll do negative five comma zero comma zero. Uh, and that's all you need for the tween. So now what we can do is tween colon play to actually make it uh, actually work. Then, uh, so that should work properly, but this is making it so that when we step on this button right here, the door will uh, open, it will slide to the left, but it, we want it to like go back to its place after a little while. So to do that, all we have to do, we just copy this, do wait maybe two seconds, and then paste it, uh, then name this tween2, change that to 2, and then all you have to change is change this to positive 5, so that it goes back to the other direction for the same amount of suds. So now that we have our two tweens, uh, we want to wait, let's say, let's do one second, uh, and then, actually, we don't need to wait, we can just set debounce equal to true, or false, I mean, and so that should be it for the button one. For the button two, all you need to do is just go ahead and copy paste this and just change this to button two. So that's pretty much it. Uh, let's go ahead and test this out to make sure that everything works because sometimes there are errors when you are scripting. That's kind of just a part of the part of the scripting process. So now let's go ahead and step on this button. And okay, it works, but we need to make it go a bit further than just five studs. So change 5 to, let's do 12, I guess. Um, this could be different for yours. It Just change it depending on what your door size is. So now, if I press play here, it should be working properly. There we go. That looks pretty cool, I'd say. So now, after 2 seconds, it goes back to its place. Uh, Hold on. I think we might have a little bit of an issue. <laughs> yeah, um, so to fix that, what we can use is, instead of a debounce, I guess, what we could do is, is open equals false. And then is it not is open. Then just kind of, to help us understand what's going on a little bit better. Um, so is open is true, then is open is false. Is not open, is open is true. And then, so if it's not open, then set it to open. I think the problem that's happening here, oh, I see what's happening, okay. All we have to do is change this to wait one, because right now what it's hap what it's doing is we're pressing on the button while it's moving it back to its place, which we don't want. So just change that to wait. And now if we press it and play, now we won't get that weird error anymore. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the tutorial. If you did enjoy, please do leave a like. Uh, and subscribe and leave some comments below for what tutorial I should make next. Thank you guys for watching. Bye